do 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 baby shark do 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 baby shark do 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 baby shark do 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 baby shark I've never opened a Facebook or Friday Night Live with that song, but I got to tell you guys, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls who are here Friday night, that um, that is a very commonly requested song by my son, three-year-old Jackson Christopher Roush, who is amazing. We were in the pool today having a great time. The guy's a little fish, so it was awesome. But yeah, um, but I encourage you guys, if your parents out there, as a side story, just before we get started here, because I want some people to get on. Um, if you like heavy metal and you like baby shark, then you should go to YouTube and Google baby shark, heavy metal, because they take a song that is ridiculously kid-like and they put some power into it. Yes. All right. So good evening, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Friday night live with myself and Scott Goyette and a couple of really super fucking kick ass guys that I have grown to love and call my brothers. And we're bringing to you tonight a, a topic of conversation that uh, quite honestly, I have coached quite a few people this week talking about their identity and talking about the identity crisis that they're going through. And I was able to share with them that recently, you guys who have been following us for a while, um, November 7th of last year, I was a corporate person, 26 years doing the coaching and everything else, but I was also a director of operations and I suddenly didn't have that anymore. It was a mutual agreement for the most part. And it allowed me to fully jump into being a coach and being a speaker and, and doing things like these that I'm passionate about. But the God's honest truth is that for a couple of months, I did not realize how much I was going to struggle with the identity of who I was in that position. And being a director of operations and having staff reporting to you, it kind of gives you a different identity that's really weird that you don't realize once you're in it. And that's the point of tonight's conversation is just to talk about the fact of what is identity and what does it mean to you and how do you get to that congruent self where you're able to show up as yourself in every situation versus having to put the mask on. I have to put the mask on when I go home. I have to put the mask on when I go to work. I have to put the mask on when I hang out with the, the friends. I have to do all this stuff. I have to put the mask on when I hang out with the family, but then I get to be myself for like 20 minutes a day. That is exhausting. So I'm so pleased to welcome to the show, obviously, my co-host, my brother from another mother, Mr. Scott Goyette. How you doing, Scott? I'm doing good. I uh, I like that baby shark. I'm just kind of still gelling with that. It was good. I liked it. It was good. I, I didn't do the heavy metal version, but it's pretty badass. I mean, it's it's crunchy. It's good. So good to have you here. And the other two people we have with you guys with, with, with us tonight are other members. We're all part of the Speaking to the Heart podcast network, and it's all as a result of Shane Schultz, the founder, the creator, the producer of this, who had a vision, who said, I want to put something together where we bring great like-minded people together who can impact the world and can take the passion and the situations that we've all been through and help other people through that congruently, authentically, and just truly make an impact in the world. So I'm so happy that we can add our, our illustrious founder, Mr. Shane Schultz, to the podcast network. And of course, it would not be a complete show without my brother from another mother, the guy that came to me and said, hey, what do you think about being a coach? How do you do that? Now he is a published author. He is the sexiest man alive in my book. And he's my brother from another mother, Mr. Travis Barton. What's up, Travis? My man. How are you doing, buddy? Dude, I'm kicking ass. I am so, I've been so fired up and just so uh, excited about the impact that we can make in the world via technology. I mean, it's so massive having people on these Friday Night Lives and having people join us on our podcast. I mean, you know, from personal experience and all the people that you coach and you impact and you've been my coach before. I mean, just tremendous. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you guys watching this either live or on the replay. And if you're watching live, we want your questions. We want your interaction. This is a conversation where the four of us are going to delve into what is identity and what is an identity crisis and how do we solve for that? How do we figure out who we really are? And we're going to attempt to do that in, in an hour. And we're going to drop some serious stuff on you. So we hope that you're taking notes and we want your interaction. We want your questions. We want whatever it is that jives with you. And then we can have that conversation with you also, because this is a group conversation. So um, I want to start tonight off just by asking each of you guys, what is, what does identity mean to you? I mean, I, when I was thinking about it, I was like, I got, I got down a rabbit hole thinking about, okay, identity is this, and then it's this, but then it's that, and then it's connected to this and it's connected to that. So I'm really interested and keen to get each of your, your opinions on what identity really is. Who wants Scott. to lead off? The co-host. Co-host. Yeah. Scott. <laughs> I, was, I'm, I was just using technology. I'm actually using my phone right now to share this one last time to tell people I'm putting join us now because we're about to say some big things right now. Yeah. Yes, uh, sir. I'm I'm gonna, sir. I'm, I'm going to do the same maybe. thing. Now, but... 
Now so, that I'm off screen, I'm going to do the same thing. Uh, you're actually drinking a beer and going to the bathroom right now. Your game. I'll, speak for, <laughs> I'll, give you, I'll give you five minutes right now. Um, I already peed first. I, I have two drinks in front of me. I will admit, and I will probably have to pee, but I have a bucket underneath yeah. my desk. No, I know when that comes. You give me that funny look at like 48 minutes, and then you hand off, and I know I've got like a certain amount to speak for. I know the game. Chris. Don't so you do that your coaching awesome. calls on video, man? If, if, come on. I think, I think now oh, that I know that. Man. Oh, my God. <laughs> that that explains a lot. Doesn't it, though? Yeah. So, All right. So so Matt, go, lead, it lead, it off. lead it off, brother. Lead it off. Let us know what identity is to you because I know you got a lot of thoughts on this. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer it and not answer it. I'm going to do a political answer because I think it's a good way to start the show. And when I started motivational speaking, I used to speak about life balance. It was the big cliche thing that everybody wanted to hear on uh, work environments or associations, people hiring to see that speech. I always ended my program on a poem by uh, Mishner, and it was called The Master and the Art of Living. And in summary, because I haven't memorized the whole poem, but what it says is, you need to be the same being, a transparent being at work, play, practicing your spirituality at everything you do, and then you will master the art of living. And so I think so many of us have gotten tied up in the individual identities in every place we go because we think we have to project something. So to not fully define identity, I wanna start the show and start a speech with this and get people thinking, what would it look like? And think of questions that you can ask us, what would it look like for you to live a life where you could be the same person at work, play, church, or wherever you practice spirituality in the woods, dance naked, whatever your thing is, in everything you do, if you could truly be your authentic self. And we are so far removed from that in our world because we're like, we can't do that. I can't speak like that. I can't do that. So I wanna give you that first and I'll give you a two second answer for identity. I think identity is whatever we plug into that. And when I mean it's that simple, it's who are you authentically, what does your energy project? So, you know, Chris, when you and I talk, we're always just kind of just free, free flowing and just being honest. And for the most part, we do that here. But there's no question when certain guests get on or whatever, we, we start to take on that 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 group. You know, this is going to be a little different than last week's show. And we're all suckers for it because that's how we've lived. So I want to challenge all of us starting right now to yeah. really take on the idea of becoming a transparent, authentic individual. So yeah. I'm going to shift that up and I'm going to create that challenge for all of us right now. So let's do that. Anybody watching, ask questions that are authentic, ask what you want to hear, have some fun. That's what let's I got do this. <laughs> let's do this. Hey, Shane, I can see something's on your mind. What's up, brother? This is a tough subject and you all know it. And I think that's why you invited me. But anyways, um, you know, I've had, I've had individual what conversations. Are, what? What do we do as coach as coaches, man? We ask the hard questions, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> Absolutely. This is like an intervention. Our motivational speakers. If we ask the easy questions, then you know. speaking no. to the heart, baby. This is what's coming up. Oh right, no, yeah. this is speaking into the mind. Is what? It, oh, okay, all right. Like, so I've had individual conversations with each and one of you, and there is a reality to my identity, and that is is that my identity is something that is perceived by me as different than what it is that might be shown in front of everybody else. And part of that has to do with my own history and everything in that sense. And I've been learning to reframe things and everything in that sense. But yeah, I mean, I've had certain situations as where my, my, my history had left me a little bit emotionally stunted and in a way to where, you know, my age, doesn't feel like what it is that I am. And, you know, it's like I'm among you guys who right around the same age, uh, maybe a little bit younger, maybe a little bit older, but well, sometimes they're a little bit much more older. But anyways, I'm sitting here and and I feel like I'm the youngest one here. Like I'm the kid that's involved with this 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 group when in fact, you know, I'm a 49 year old man. And so that identity is something that is something that I work with every single day. And I try to be congruent with what it is that I do. Um, you know, but it's definitely a challenge for me. And, you know, and, and I, I've, I've had this conversation with, with each and every one of you, um, you know, over the years. And, uh, you know, so this, this is something to where I'm going to be listening quite a bit. But yeah, uh, you know, I mean, I'm just putting some knowledge on you, you know, that's, that is possible as to where that, 
that identity is definitely something that needs to be taken into account. Mm-hmm. And last but certainly not least, our newly published rock star author, Mr. Travis Barton. Dude, what's the name of your book and where can people get it? Before I get into that, before I get into that, Shane, you said something. You're like, I, uh, you know, you said, I feel like I'm the youngest one here. Yeah. I perpetually feel like that throughout my whole life. So full transparency. I always feel like, you know, we're well, the oldest one here people. now, Travis. <laughs> am, am I the oldest one? Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> I will admit I'm 37. But you know what? <laughs> I, it's that's a, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> don't laugh so hard. <laughs> what the fuck was that? Yeah. yeah. Hey, 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 just so you know, you have a mute button for him. Okay. <laughs> now you just ruined my identity. <laughs> oh man! Now he's got a whole new identity. He's totally <laughs> stunned now. Hey, I'm close enough to come um, kick your ass. Well, you actually, are, no, you I think you, you do. You no, you're a badass. You seriously are. So, what do you what do you got to say about it, Travis? Come on. The feeling of mutual um, identity is 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 is. I think sadly, uh, the, the the real sadness of life is, is that most of us never figure out who are we are at a true core selves. Uh, I like to answer that question um, mm -hmm. with kind of a story that I often tell clients when you're on uh, discovery of purpose, when you're looking for a life of fulfillment and meeting. I think a lot of us look for identity out there, out in the world. We think it's something that we can go out and get. There's an old story, and you will often hear it uh, from me, anybody who's followed me for a while. Uh, how many of you here have heard the whole story of the uh, Golden Buddha? Oh, Chris, good Lord, not Scott. the Golden Buddha. <laughs> not the Golden Buddha. <laughs> it's a poignant story, Shane. So I, I, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I don't think I've heard it. If I have, I forgot about it. So let us have it. So this is a true story, by the way. 1957, they're moving this, uh, and I'll make it short, Shane, since you know, <laughs> you've heard it before. Um, back in 1957, um, in, in Thailand, when you they were, were moving this giant, giant, uh, giant, 10-foot-tall uh, clay Buddha statue. Yeah. And in moving it, they, they found this crack in the statue. And underneath the crack, what do you think they found, Shane? Uh, that would be the golden Buddha. That would, well, that'd be gold. You're ruining gold. It. Spoiler alert. <laughs> and so it uh, turns out what happened is when the Burmese army was invading um, um, Siam at the time, which is now Thailand, um, the Siamese um, monks hid this giant 10 foot tall, two and a half ton golden Buddha statue and they hid it in clay so that the Burmese would not see any value in it. So all these hundreds of years went by and everybody thought of this giant Buddha statue as nothing more than clay. But what was under it was, in fact, the entire time gold. The entire time, the giant golden Buddha statue. Nobody knew it. This is a lot like us, and and, and in our identity and who we are at our core selves. It's not about adding more proverbial clay to the Buddha. It's about chipping away. And I love what Scott said. It's it's not about wearing a mask around you know other people and, and doing what we think, showing up how we we think we might have to show up around other people. It's about showing up at our core selves, and it's really about identifying, chipping away that proverbial proverbial clay, so we can get to that that really inner gold that each and every single one of us have. Beyond mm -hmm. beyond our old stories, beyond our limiting beliefs, beyond the patterns, beyond all of that, to get to our core selves. And that's, to me, uh, when you, when we speak of identity, that, that is what immediately resonates with me. So let me ask you a question. That's great. I mean, all of your answers are, are superb. Talk to us about the fact of where you have been in that situation where you realized that your identity wasn't who you really thought you were. And that came as a shock. Like you thought you were this. And all of a sudden you realized, wait a minute, I'm not that. I'm not that label. I keep hearing people ask, like, who are you? And when you dig deep into that question, it's like, well, I'm Christopher Roush. No, you're not Christopher Roush. Well, I'm this. No, I'm not this. And you keep digging digger, keep digging deeper. I could talk. Um, so has there been a situation in your lives where you have realized like, wow, I've thought I was this, but really I'm that. You know, this is something that I, that I, you know, I'm sure you guys do um, work with, you know, clients on. I've been obsessed with it over the past couple of years is, is identifying the, the root of belief and old patterns and old stories and some, something like your name. Like I am not Travis Barton. That's just merely a name that's been given to me, you know, and we can go down that wormhole. Um, sure. for a while and we were really getting into the, um, you know, um, really wild, uh, spiritual stuff there. But, you know, most of what we adopt in our life are old patterns and beliefs that we've kind of adopted in our life and aren't necessarily ones that serve us. Um, so there was a moment in my life and, uh, you know, it, nothing 
special was happening around me that I woke up in a cold sweat in the middle of the night. And I, I just kind of had this moment where I saw clearly for the first time. And I wasn't, um, I, I was living in alignment with what others expected of me, what, who others wanted me to be. I was living in alignment with social conditioning and cultural expectations and, 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 and what the, the parents wanted me to become in my life. But in doing that, I distanced myself from what my heart was calling me to be. Yeah. And what my heart was calling me to do. And, and, and that was, uh, that was well, I, I realized in, in doing what was easy and serving everybody else, life was becoming difficult. Yes. But what I had to do was to do what was really difficult in life, which, which was stand on my own ground and stand on my power. And, and in doing that, life would become really easy. And here I am today. Life has been pretty easy as a result of doing what was hard in that moment, I guess. So what do you, so Travis, based on that, what do you say to people who are struggling with that similar situation? How do they, how do they figure out how to get out of that? Yeah. Slow down. Uh, for, for me, and I'm not saying this is necessarily a tool that everybody should adopt in their life. Although it would be, it'd probably be wise to start this way. Is uh, how many here in this room, just how many of us meditate on a pretty consistent basis? Anybody? Yeah. Scott. So it, it doesn't surprise me that the four of us who are sitting in this room together, uh, I didn't know this about you guys actually. So this does surprise me. And this is really cool. Is that, is that we I talk at it, but so, I do it. Yeah, you didn't well, say you how can't, good you we can't, are at it. Well, see that you can't goes, suck at meditating. No, it, you it, can't suck. So it's many your, never it's your journey. Yeah. It's, your, it's yours. Yeah, man. It, Dude, it, it drives this, me this crazy. Is thing. It's just, exactly, Scott. This is your journey. What you do on that cushion, that's you, man. And 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 our, our truest wisdom, our truest wisdom comes not in our thinking. It does not come in our thinking because more that is more usually. Uh, thinking incongruently with old beliefs and patterns, our truest wisdom, our truest insights into who we are come not in our thinking, but in the spaces between our thinking. Mm -hmm. And I find, and I encourage people to practice meditation because meditation is the easiest way, or not the easiest, I shouldn't say the easiest, <laughs> but one of the most efficient ways to, to really, to really find those gaps in between the thinking and really have those moments of insight where we go, holy sh shit. That's who I am. And I know I can cuss because I'm on Chris's show. No, uh, absolutely. Holy no, shit. Those no, are no. incredible. No, and it's all worth it. Yeah. Hell yeah. What about you, Scott? Travis, so, so I want to add to that because, you know, it, it's very interesting because being on this earth in this egoic world, you know, that, you know, we're growing up as kids, like be the best athlete, be the smartest kid, get the scholarship, get the pretty girl, everything that we're supposed to do to validate the ego, we dive head on into it. And, when we look at the intellectual people that we admire most, you know, an Einstein, for example, you actually listen to the things that Einstein said, and he said exactly what you said, <clears throat> just said, but with different verbiage. What he used to do was he would just think and think and think and said, how can I solve this problem? What's the equation? How do I do this? How do I do this? And he, and he said that he finally learned once he achieved this sense of wisdom that the minute he stopped thinking and he went into the space of just being, which is essentially what we're talking about with meditating, where he just said, I quit. The answer would show up and, and it's consistent it. you you listen to any of the great thinkers of any time it's always the same thing so a lot of people stumble into meditation they don't even show what it is like we define it now there were people who just said i quit i'm just not going to think anymore and it's almost a surrender which we listen to in all these religious contexts but the minute you just drop in and say ah, and just sink into your breath all of a sudden you're like Oh, the conduit to, to, to source, to all existence, the answers are there. And the minute we sit in our brains, we're screwed. And that's exactly my point why I led with the master in the art of living. Because the master in the art of living is literally the master in the art of being. That's what I take from it. So it's the master in the art of, I'm going to do, do, do. Like, I was just on the, I was with Shane about an hour and a half ago. And I said, Shane, I got to get off because I got to do a few things. One of the most important things I did in that hour and a half was sit for 15 minutes and be and just meditate. Nice. And then I fixed my hair so that I look good. And they all matter. They all matter. <laughs> and your hair looks great. You got to cut. Well, yeah. you, listen. See you see this thing right listen. here? This is intentional. That was intentional. Because <laughs> I was like, I was like, they're going to think mean. that I just messed it up. No, that was really intentional. So I look right? like I live today. It's like we're going hey, on man, a Friday night. I don't night. care. I don't care. Yeah, you, you know what this, this says about me? This says, this says, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care you should wear a bandana then. <laughs> I love it. But yeah, so I think, uh, I think those moments that we settle into, that's where it all happens. 
Yeah. True. Uh, if you don't meditate and you're watching this, have you noticed that your best moments or your best insights and best thinking always comes in the shower? Or the John. He's not thinking. Or the, or the John. Well, yep. not, not the John anymore. Not the John anymore because everybody's like, yeah, the it's the Karen. It's the Karen now. Yeah, it's the Karen. Get, right. Karen is the one. So the minute. <laughs> I feel bad for people named Karen and Katrina. I swear to God, I do. I have, a, I have a great friend named Karen, and she's the anti-Karen. And she might be watching this. She's somebody who would watch this. The Karen, anti-Karen. Are you watching this right now? I'm sorry. <laughs> Hello, she's here. She's going to come in. Puerto Rico. Jose Moreno. Holy shit, Jose. Dude, I've known What's this guy on? for a long fucking time. Dude, it's so good to see you here. Thank you. Wow, Hello, Jose. Dude, he's a great guy. He's a great, great dude. Wow, that's really cool. I'm really shocked. Fuck, I've done that guy for a while. He's cool people. And he's really good. He would give Travis right for his money on looks. He's a really good looking guy. But no, let's let's not Stop go into looks right now. Man. Hey, Chris, we're, not, we're, talking, we're getting away from the ego, uh, man. We're getting into the, the, the real core, quick. Man. I let, my ego. Yeah. Let's go back into something real quick. Cindy asked a question earlier when Travis was up. And yeah. I think we should, we should all answer everybody's questions because that's why we're here to this well, I, saw, I saw Roxy had. <clears throat> So, well, somebody mentioned they said, Do you guys hold each other accountable? Oh, so yeah. we're sitting here, we're oh, sitting yeah. here floating into it these things. So, but do you hold you hold each other accountable? Yeah. Um, yeah, no shit. So, yeah, we so, do. so let's let's tap into that. Yeah. I mean, sure. Chris, how many times like are you saying something or am I saying something? And we're like, Yeah, but does it really benefit you? Whatever. I mean, let's talk about how we do that. Week? 17 yeah. times a week. You, you, you I should be an iron. I mean, that's a, I know it's a biblical refer- reference, but I love the fact that when you get t- you get two people, five people, that's what they call it a mastermind. When you get people that are grinding against each other and saying, no, I want to push back on that. The interview that I did yesterday, there was a part in there where I said, and I'm dealing with two traumatic experiences. I'm not going to go into detail right now because it's a fucking phenomenal interview, but you go into these traumatic experiences. And I said, everything happens for a reason. And I showed my tattoo and I said, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And one of the guests said, I'm going to push back on that. I said, do please. I said, I understand what you're going to do because I've had people do that, that have been victimized and everything and push back on that. So, I mean, that, that exactly is what we're doing. Cindy is that fact that when you want to grow, you get your, when I, I was asking somebody, I asked a post recently and I said, is your best friend tell you the truth? And it was shocking how many people were like, I don't think so. And I'm like, well, they're not your fucking best friend because your best friend would tell you the truth and say, hey, am I fat in these jeans? Yeah, you need to lose fucking 20 pounds. But your friend's going to go, no, you look great because they don't want to hurt your feelings, but you need to have your feelings hurt to move forward. So yes, we do hold each other accountable. That's my answer. Chris, I had two divorces because of that. So I'm not totally sure that's true. (laughs) I'm just kidding. I've only been married once. But no, seriously. I'm going to be like, oh, really? Um, No. Shane, yeah, what talk, do you think about that? Talk about holding accountable. I, you know, definitely, m- even more so than just holding accountable, we're also very um, honest with one another. Like we're very, we're very forward with one another. Oh yeah. We all four of us have had awkward moments with each other. You know, what I mean, like when when we were kind of like voicing our opinion on a, on certain things. You know, whether it be whether it be the the show that 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 is on the network or whether it be you know our personal selves, you know, like I'll sit there and I'll say, man, you know, it's like, it's like an avalanche. Things just keep on coming on and on and on. And Travis is just like, you got to get out of that frame of mind, man. You got to get out of that frame of mind because it's more than just what it is that happened to you. This is happening for you. Same thing with, with Chris, Chris would go ahead and he would say, well, how's that working for you? (laughs) You know? And I'm like, I'm like, it's not, it really isn't. And, you know, and, and Scott, I, you know, had um, confided in him a, a number of different times. One was actually today. And, and it kind of goes along with what it is that we're talking about. And that is, I don't script what it is that I do behind the mic for the most part. None you know what I mean? For the most part, I basically do what it is that I do just natural. And I have held myself down for a very, very long time. I've held my actual true identity down for a very long time. I've always had that, um, you know, those core values of which, you know, somebody else has it worse than you. So, you know, get over it with what it is that you're going through or somebody, um, you know, uh, needs more help than you do. So, okay, well, I'm there to rescue everybody. I'm there to make a difference for everybody. So I would go ahead and I would go around like that. And then I would sit there and like, 
kind of like piggybacking off of what it is that I said before. That identity thing is to where I feel like I'm younger. And when I say younger, I'm talking like the kid, um, the kid within. And so, you know, on top of that, that's holding me down. Like that's keeping me down from being my true potential, my true height that my potential is there. And in talking with Scott, you know, it's like just, just an hour ago, you know, I said, you know, it's like, look, man, it's like, I don't even think about this anymore. I just get behind the mic and I just go. And it has done me pretty, pretty good so far. And I, you know, and everybody keeps coming back to me and saying, man, you do this, you know, in a great way and you understand me and this and that. And it's like, it just works. So it, it, it's, it's the way that it's meant to be versus being forced or being ex- instructed to be. And I think what you just said was beautiful, Shane. And the fact that when I tell people that I was a control freak and, and, and we've had, all of us have had conversations about that, the perfectionism that I did, the survivorism that I did, that my coach got, got me through and, and thinking about the fact that when you just show up, I was, I was on three coaching calls yesterday and, and I said, when you just show up and you just be you, when you just be you, you don't worry about other stuff. There's, there's somebody that's watching right now. And she's like, I feel so good because my virtual friends don't expect anything from me. They don't want me to be something that I'm not. And that's, I mean, that's the total thing that I really try to bring to this game. Honestly, I mean, with the bandana and everything, it's like, just be who you are because when you show up, the right motherfuckers show up with you and then it builds and you get the strength and you get this energy. And I get these chills on my, my, my forearm because it really is magnificent. But if you sit there and try to fight it and you try to like, no, I have to have my mom's approval. I have to have my teacher's approval. I have to have my family's approval. I have to have this approval and my, my work. When you live like that, you're living in a cage. Am I right? What do you guys yeah. think about that? There's no question. I just want to say one last thing. You know, when it came to each one of you having your shows, I've worked with each one of you, you know, developing your show and 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 figuring out how it is that it was going to work and and why it is that you were doing the things that you were doing. If you remember right, I said, "Be you." You know, oh, yeah, I mean, you did. I'm, you did. I am not there to to dictate who it is that you are. I'm there to emphasize who you are. I'm there to emphasize your strengths. I'm emphasize your vulnerabilities. I'm to emphasize what it is that even your weaknesses are. Because I didn't want to just like control everything. I mean, I could if I wanted to, but that's not me. I want you to be free because I want people to identify with you. That's why we have the Facebook groups that we have for each show. Because I want the I want your followers to identify with you. And that doesn't mean just with the show itself. I'm talking about you. Like when you do your walk and talks, Chris, when you're you're out there with Ozzy and you're just like doing your thing or you're with Jackson, that's cool. When Travis is up there and he's doing slack lining and everybody's like, <laughs> you know, it's like, you I know, watched, I watched that, some crazy shit. And I said, my buddy Travis does that. And yeah. we were watching some crazy shit. So, yeah. And that, you know, and then I'm surprised and, you got the name right. Most people call it tightrope rocking. So right on, Shane. <laughs> I, I, I follow who it is that I have on my network, trust me. And there's Scott, you know, with Go Love Now and everything. You know, I mean, this is really, it's it's not about controlling. It's about liberating and, and emphasizing who it is that you are and then having the audience gravitate to each and every host as much as what I possibly can. And, you know, and like I said, we've had awkward moments, you know, and a lot of that has to do with my own limitations and everything in that sense that has kept me from being able to perform in the best way that I know how and and what it is that I had started. And so, you know, but the real reality of the situation is, is that I want you guys to be you and I want to emphasize you and I want to take things to a whole new level together. That's the whole plan. So I'll start, and I, and I'll start and I, from there. And I have to thank you, Shane, for that because I remember, I remember it so vividly. Travis, you started the podcast. And I think I was the second guest. I can't remember what it was. And when I, I came on, wanted to do your show, I'm like, yeah, this is going to be cool. And Shane's like, you know, we started talking. I'm like, well, I'm kind of a different bird. You know, I'm like, I'm the outspoken one. And she's like, no, I want you on the podcast. I want you on the podcast. I'm like, nah. And it took a year because I was like, I don't know. And I'm like, I don't want mental health and chronic pain and everything else that we're trying to do. I don't want to be marred by the fact that I'm so me. But the fact that you took me on, you're like, no, dude, be raw and unscripted. And you said it today in your in your Facebook Live that you did. And so I just want to thank you so much because it takes a lot for somebody to say, I just want you to be you and know that you're going to be you in yeah. a such 
a profound way. I mean, don't you guys agree on just the feeling of just being you? I mean, it's taken me 51 fucking years to get to this point, but wow, what an amazing feeling just to be you. Yeah. So let's go back to the incredible Travis. freedom. Let's go back to Travis's comment because he had a beautiful comment. And um, I know Shane doesn't want to go revisit it because he heard the story many times, but the gold within, because <clears throat> every single one of us, all right. And this is, you know, I, I always come back to this esoteric stuff, but it's, we, we, we need to start getting there collectively. The fluffy bullshit? No. Fluffy bullshit. Let's, let's get into some fluffy bullshit. Come on. We've been talking too normal, you know. Let's, let's, get, to <laughs> let's get to where I like, you know. Let's get to where I'm comfortable. Arthritis. Um, do it, dude. Do it. Every single one of us. And, and, you know, when we hear it, we do call it fluffy bullshit because it just feels weird. Every single one of us is gold. Like every yeah. every person here. The only difference between us, all right, we're, we're gold consciousness, we're, we're infinite beings, we're a different perspective point in this universe. That's it. That's the only differentiator. So, so Travis wakes up in, in his existence in a different perspective point. Shane wakes up, Chris wakes up, Scott wakes up. And this journey is this story of everything that's happened. And when we emotionally just hold on to a piece and say, I'm not good enough, or this teacher said this, or this teacher said this. And, and Shane, you can hear it loud and clear in your voice. You're saying you feel younger than us. What I was feeling when you're saying that is you're feeling the child, Shane, who wasn't fully accepted or didn't get all of the things that they needed. And, and that's where that youth is coming from. The minute we all detach from those emotions, we know that we're gold and we know that we're infinite. That's your identity. I mean, if you really want to answer it back up to the question, your identity is you are infinite spirit. That's it. I mean, we can we can answer in two words, infinite spirit, period. And, and it's gold or whatever you want to call it. So what does that mean? What does that mean to somebody who doesn't understand that? Like me four years ago, I would have went infinite spirit. Fuck you. What the hell is that bullshit? I so how, said, how, was, how do we get people to that transition to that? It, I'm going to tell you how to do it. I'm going to tell you how to yeah. do it. It's this simple. Yeah. It's this simple. Okay. Every single thing that you have a memory of, you have an emotional attachment to. Every single thing. No arguments. That's what that's what makes consciousness. Otherwise, we'd just be animals that are going through the moment. So those. Squirrel. Those, no. Okay. There you go. <laughs> you see the guy from uh, what's Ice Age. So so in that moment, okay, when we've got all those emotional connections, the minute we come to presence, we always hear people talking about take a deep breath and come to presence. And we're like, what does that mean? What does it mean to be present? This is what it means to be present. Take a deep breath. Yeah, there's shit going on. You don't you don't feel good because you've got everything that you're you're remembering that happened and everything that might happen so we've got worry and all the things that happened in the past that's the baggage the minute we sit in the present we say anything is possible i'm an infinite being and i'm a creator in this universe just you can say that right now you can you can feel the weight of past and future you can feel the weight of that but keep taking deep breaths and say anything is possible and just just sink into that do that right now. Take a bunch of deep breaths and sink into that because I can't tell you enough. I can't tell you enough. Your yesterday is going to continue to be your yesterday and you can hold those emotions. That's going to weigh the shit out of you. And you can create these worries that COVID is going to get you. You're never going to find the right relationship. You're never going to lose the weight. You're never going to have the job. You're speaking to universe. It's saying no to you. You're saying no, no, no. Then you're already right. If you say you're going to do it or you're not going to do it, you're right. It's that fucking simple. So here's what I would challenge everybody to do in their identity. Sit in truth and just take some breaths. Tell yourself flat out that you are gold and an infinite being and take one step, one step to being everything you want to be. And one of the best ways to do that, I would do two things. I would do two steps. I would tell yourself you love yourself. First step in self-nurture. And I would do something to serve somebody else. So you're creating connection and you're, you're, minding, you're reminding yourself you're important. If you do that and walk away from this show right now, you're a winner. I guarantee it. it it's so. funny because I put yesterday that uh, I'm taking a nurturing day. It, people didn't know what the hell I was talking about. They didn't know what, what that meant. You know, I mean, it was like. Huh? Like, like what, what are you talking we all about? Need that. I mean, seriously, you have to take a mental day anytime you like, go, oh, fuck, I'm going to go take a drive. I'm going to go paint. I'm going to go like, I'm gonna whatever do that right it is. you got to do that. Yeah. You got to do that. Travis, I see you scratching your that's beard. That, 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 
<laughs> that's a prerequisite <laughs> for discovering yourself, self-care, right? I, to go with what Scott's saying, there's a very simple question, I guess, that I, or, that I meditated on for a long mm -hmm. time, and it was this, and I'm going to share it with you right now. So sure. I encourage Bring anybody who's, who's talking, about, talking about identity, uh, Dave, if you're watching, I think we've talked about this. I think I saw a comment from Dave. Very simple. Let's sit and reflect on this. Who am I if I have no problem to solve and nothing to become? Second question. Who am I beyond my old stories? Two very simple mm -hmm. questions, and I'm not going to give you the answers to those because that's for up for you to decide. You're not going to you're not going to find identity through information. You're going to find it through through action, through doing it yourself, and, and sitting with that. And I I'd encourage everyone tonight, tomorrow, some point, to sit and make that a practice and see what begins to show up in your life. Yeah, somebody somebody type that in. Somebody type that in to the Travis. Can you type that in later, or yeah. somebody put that yeah. in so the people have it? Yeah. Type 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 that in into the comments. You Say know, again, I, Travis. Say I wish I could. I'm on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> Who am I? Go back, dude. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen. I didn't say you. I said somebody. I mean, we've got people watching. It's like yeah, somebody yeah. who's listening to us. Type that in and and put it into the comments. You know, no, another... seriously, Travis, Travis. You just said something about. I'm not, sorry, Shane. No, you just said something about stories. Like the stories. How. I mean, that is so paramount in this discussion right now is the stories we tell our, tell ourselves because I was just literally thinking about something that happened and I had to question myself. I'm like, is that the truth or is that my perception of the right. truth of what happened 20 fucking years ago? And I'm like, and I literally Dang. had to question myself and most people don't question them. So I'm like, I'm like, is that right? Did I, and there's nobody I could talk bro. to if it's right or not. So I'm like, it wasn't right because I don't want that to be right. I don't want it to be the a situation that causes me that I want it to be a situation that causes me to grow. So, I mean, stories are paramount and they're the weight of boulders, everything, right? You know what I mean? It's like, it's like they're, they, they weigh like rocks that are on, on the back of the chain that happens over time. Like it right. starts up as a seed. Dad, dad said, I'm not good enough when I was four yeah. years old. Yeah. Does yeah. that really mean you're good enough? Or does that actually mean that he was having a bad day and he just, didn't even realize he said it. Yep. That little seed informs the next thing of, I didn't make a soccer team, so I'm not good enough. Right. Does that mean you're not good enough? Or does that mean just Tate? Maybe there That's were 11 other guys that were at that time. Right. So we do this throughout our life and it's the wildest thing that this becomes our identity. This becomes everything that we know about ourselves. And it's, it, all we have to do is, like you said, Chris, is question it, man. Analytically, we're, we're all lot, we're four logical guys sitting here, but we what we refuse to do a lot of the time as human beings is, is approach our past story from a logical standpoint. We approach it only through an emotional standpoint. And I just read this book. It's called "I Think Therefore I Lie." Very oh, yeah. nobody knows oh. about it as far as I can tell. Have you read it? No, no I've heard it. Sounds, it. Yeah. sounds compelling. Yeah, it's incredible. So it's it's about awakening. It's about awakening through this radical technique of what? Guess what? Challenging my thoughts. Every thought I have. Every, every thought I have. So, um, hey, um, I'm not good enough. Let's use the most common one, right? So we mm -hmm. that permeates through our life and we, we let our day be run by that simple seed of a thought and therefore our life. Well, let's right? dive so down the hole is, for a second. Go ahead. So, what, so what we say is we acknowledge that thought and we say, how do I, we ask ourselves, how do I know that's not true? Or how could that not be true? What's some logical reasoning that I can use to support that it's not true? Right? And then we can see that our thoughts have two sides to it, that we're choosing to believe these thoughts that just kind of pop into the air. It's pretty so incredible, guys, man. No, no, seriously, it's powerful. What do you guys think that people are going through right now and, and trying to struggle with their identities in the situations where they were in their jobs or, or situations have happened? What are some of what do you guys think are some of the identity struggles that people are having right now? And how can we help them, you know? go through the experience that we've gone through and that we're going through. I mean, I honestly, Scott and I talk all the time. We're like, fuck dude. It's like, just seriously, the energy right now in the world, but you think about the world and you're connected to it. People that are struggling with that. What do you say? What do you guys say to them? And what empowerment can we give them to, to free fall into being who they are and to trusting like the Steve Harvey video jump. It's like, that is such a mag. That's probably one of my favorite videos of all time. 
Steve Harvey jump. If you guys haven't ever seen it, go watch it. It's two minutes. It's impactful. What do you guys say to those people that are sitting there struggling with the fact that like, okay, who am I now? Am I, am I the husband? Am I the, 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 and I, I mean, I keep telling people like, this is your opportunity to come out of this is that like Travis 17.0, Christopher 17.0, you know, Scott, this is the opportunity for us to really grow and come out of this, like not being the same. Everybody keeps talking about the new normal. I mean, how do we banish that new normal and, and fall into who it is that we are? And we let go of the other people. That's the problem that I've been finding people. They don't, I don't want to disappoint this person. I want to make this person mad. I, I, I think that person's going to come around. What do we say to people that say, you know what? You have to let go of all that shit and just be who you are. How do we get people to transition on that? Okay. I, I want to throw one simple thing and I'll hand it up to you guys because, because I had this conversation with you the other night. And I, I I love to be a big spirit and I do not ever, ever want to remove people from my existence that offer me new perspective. And, and I'm learning a lesson. I'm learning a very valuable lesson. So through social media and in my life, I keep everybody around because what I've noticed is the people who create tunnel vision and only have people in their confirmation bias zone around them. You know, I'm not going to bring up too much political, but look at President Trump. You know, he's bringing everybody who says you're good and I'm not, I don't want to go down that road, but we see those people who say, I want everyone just to believe what I believe. I, I do that to a fault. Here's something I'm going to, I'm going to offer you. And this is my new thought. And this is the great Dude. thing about this show. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to teach you when I'm learning on the fly because we're far from perfect, you know, to that question, are you accountable? We all are. This is what I realized. You don't need to have everybody with a different perspective if we ignore integrity levels. Now hear that loud and clear. We don't need to have all perspectives ignoring integrity levels. Of people that are of similar level, level of integrity that at least believe I wanna be good to other people, I wanna to listen to other people, I wanna understand other people, I wanna learn about perspectives. If you have a different opinion to me, then I want you to sit next to me. But when I come across people who are questioning things that are like human decency and they're, they're just doing things that make no sense with zero integrity because it's all about them, them, them. I'm removing those people from my life. Mm -hmm. And I don't care if it's my best friend. I don't care if they're social media friends. I'm removing them from my life. And, and I want to tell you why, because in my efforts to serve you, Chris, or to serve you, Travis, or to serve you, Shane, or serve anybody who's listening here as a coach, a friend or anything are diluted when those people weigh me down. So I'm not doing it for me selfishly. I'm doing it to serve others. And, and I just want to leave it with that because I'm in growth mode on this. So, you know, we're talking about, you know, what, what, did someone say I'm not good enough or somebody say you should have a broad spectrum of friends? Yeah, we've heard it all and I'm learning on the fly. So everything I always say is yet. I'm at a, sp I'm at a point now with growth mindset. I'm not there yet, but I'm certainly on the path. And my newest understanding, even though I've heard it a million times, is remove those people who are bringing you down and i'm and i'm ready to do it and it's based on integrity massive people yeah. now, that's now, the shit right there <laughs> but don't ask me how to define integrity yet because that's tomorrow i haven't thought through that yet because <laughs> i've been thinking <laughs> that's been the whole day i am but here's my brain if i'm listening to that and i'm somebody asking a question i'm gonna I, my next question to be how do you define integrity yeah so i'm taking that <laughs> shit away because i honestly i was because i go right to my next phase of growth what do i do next and so right away i was like oh shit, how do i define integrity so so we're gonna get that next show right absolutely <laughs> I just want to give a shout out to raquel thank you for being here raquel i had a conversation with her yesterday yeah. beautiful conversation integrity isn't always a popular isn't the popular vote yeah why that's good because because, because why it, it shows you've stood for who you are if, you, if you're trying to go around pleasing everyone guess what you're not part of your everyone. uniqueness you're not right yeah. yeah that's part of your thank you shane yeah absolutely um you cannot go around trying to make everybody else happy because in doing that i can guarantee you you're not being true to who you are at your core i can guarantee that I can absolutely guarantee that. So uh, integrity is not always a popular vote because integrity to me, my definition of it, and this isn't a, this isn't etched on some mystical tomb and in, 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 in top of a mountain peak okay. in Tibet. This is my definition is integrity is how congruent we are with who we are. Uh, there's an old Sunday school back when I was going to Sunday school. She told me something that actually stuck with me in the whole life. She goes, Travis, there's a fine line between Saturday night and Sunday morning. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and, I, yeah, and I go, it's called and fun. As an eight-year-old kid, I'm like, I'm 
like, holy shit, right? Because how many people show up at which Sunday Mass was, and they go, oh, which I'm one was the authentic you? <laughs> right? Yeah, right? You know, mm-hmm. so it's about, and, and Scott, you said something uh, about, you know, showing up as your work, as your, in your life, and, and yeah. showing up in your spiritual practice the same congruently. Yeah. There's a great quote that from the Buddha is, is he says, a, a, a wise man makes little distinction between his work and his play. Be that you. that that is Be actually you. exactly the line. It's it's little distinction between work, play, spirituality. That's actually the line that's incorporated in that poem, and I think that's where originally that originated. Because I've been out to Thailand, saw the Golden Buddha, traveled through Cambodia, all the stuff you're talking about, man. I'm I'm sitting there kneeling, talking to the monks, trying to bring it all in. So yeah, I get it. Right, you man. Know, and it's yeah, funny yeah, because right. like, in having Travis on. You know, when I first brought Travis on to a risen strength, that's where it is that we we learned of each other and everything. And I had him on as a guest and he talked about how his work was his play and he was all about play and and mm-hmm. and all about, you know, that that just that childlike play. And everybody resonates to that. Everybody understands that. Everybody wants that. Why? Very few people Why? live that. Why? Very, very Why? few people live that, though. Why, is why do that? they want that? You know? Why do they want that, Shane? Why do they want well, that? That's the critical question. Why do they want that? Go ahead. No, you. <laughs> <laughs> um, you said you felt the youngest. No, no, no question, Shane. Um, <laughs> honestly, come I mean, on, man. it is. It is. I know it, man. It's really <laughs> the authentic. It. It's the authenticity of who we who we are. I mean, like, like there are times as to where, like, you, you just, you feel like a certain way. You feel like everything's frustrating. Everything's just like going wrong. Everything's, you know, just a hard deal. And then all of a sudden, you feel the lion come right out of you, and you're like, "Fuck this!" You know what I mean? And it's like literally, and it's like, <laughs> "Hey, listen, this is my network. I can go ahead." And say <laughs> uh, so, you know, what I mean. And you just like scream it out and you just like, like literally you just come out with all that passion and emotion that's been built within, you know, I mean, I could tell a short story here is like where my, as a kid, my parents came to me and they said, if you don't get your grades up, you're going to a military Catholic school. That was the plan, you know? And I'm like, oh, oh." Oh you know what I mean? So I'm like, all right. You know, so I went and I got my grades up like a half, you know, I mean, it wasn't it wasn't like I did a big, huge difference or anything like that. Still had a C in, in math and everything in that sense. So I got it up to like a B plus. The next thing I know, I'm going to a military Catholic school and I'm like, whoa, time out. Wait a minute. I got my grade up. <laughs> you know what I mean? But they sent me to a military Catholic school. Now I'm sitting there and Travis, Travis was talking about it. I'm sitting there thinking. Man, I I did something wrong here. I didn't. I I must not be worthy of being able to do things on my own. You know, they think that I need to be corrected. They think that I need to be going in a direction that they think I need to be, and everything like that. And I, you know, and I went to a military Catholic school that was number six in the country in academics. And you know, and I really had, a, you know, I I learned a, a ton. Fast forward, where I'm 35 years old. And I'm in a pool and I'm talking to having one of those candid conversations with my mom. And I'm sitting there and I said, not for nothing, but was I that much of a hoodlum? And she's like, (laughs) what the hell are you talking about? And I said, you sent me to a military Catholic school. What's a hoodlum? Well, do I need to go there? Um, But younger people watching this, dude, they're not 75 years old. 37 year old guys wouldn't know that. We'll have to ask the oldest guy. All right. Yeah. <laughs> right. It means, hey, kid, hey, hey, TikTokers, it means a G. <laughs> <laughs> hey, TikTok, right, okay, right. So, anyways, so I'm sitting there and I'm hey, like, hey, fellow kids. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, Shane, what the hell are you talking about? She goes, We sent you to the best school that we could afford. Mm-hmm. Now, mind you, this is junior and high school, right? And now I'm 35 years old. I was living from junior and high school till age 35 thinking and having the perception of that I wasn't enough in order to be able to to stay with my friends in my hometown. I wasn't enough in order to be able to do things on my own. I needed to be corrected. I needed to be you know, brought to a military Catholic school to be kind of whipped into shape to be a better human being. That wasn't the case at all. 
they were sending me to the best school that they could afford. And with that being the case, they were like emphasizing my strength. They were, they were building my strengths. They were looking for me to be who it is that I was, but that wasn't the perception that I had. And, you know, and you're going to have something that's going to be similar with COVID. A lot of people are going to use COVID as their scapegoat. Chris, we talked about this on, on Raw and Unscripted. They're going to use this as their scapegoat because they're going to say, my relationship that went wrong, <laughs> right? Because we've been together for so long now. And now all of a sudden she doesn't want to be with me anymore or he doesn't want to be with me anymore. Or I lost my job because of COVID or I lost, or I lost my friendship because of COVID or whatever the case might be. They're constantly going to be using that term. And is it going to be true and authentic? The answer is probably no. No, no, we have a, we have a, we have so, a great, so, go ahead, Travis. Sorry. Uh, I think I might be on a delay or something. Um, Shane, what you're saying is, is, is this for 35 years or for too what, long, 20, 20 years, uh, <laughs> yeah. you, li you lived in alignment with a story that you told yourself that wasn't in fact the reality of the situation at all. Absolutely. And that's a big, that's a big story. Yeah. Um, how, how many people out there right now can we look back at our stories and just, I challenge everybody watching this right now to look back at some of their old stories and their old traumas maybe and patterns and maybe the core of why they show up a certain way in life and kind of look at it from an analytical standpoint. Be like a scientist, not a pseudoscientist. Don't be a confirmation bias and, and find all the evidence to support your story. Try to find the evidence that contradicts it, just like a real logical scientist and see how valid the story that you've been telling yourself actually is. I challenge you to do that and mm. see what kind of freedom opens up for your life as a result. Damn. Look at Travis go. My boy. <laughs> Dude, I still, remember, I still remember our conversation at TGI Fridays over a beer and a sandwich. Talking <laughs> about, he's like, he's like, so what's this life coach shit? And I'm like, okay, here's what's going on. And he was one of the motherfuckers. I swear to God, I love you to death, dude. I swear to God, I have so much respect for you. You were one of the few of, of like 100 people who came to me who actually went and said, dude, that's what I want to do. And you went and did it and you're doing it. So massive respect for you. You're a published author. Um, so serious. I mean, that's what it is. It's like the story. It's like, what are you, what are you writing in your brain? I was sitting there, I was watching something the other day and it said, just think about when you reflect back on a story and do you think it's truth, but it's been so far removed that the truth is probably blurred and you're creating the truth to either protect you or destroy you. And I I've, I've talked to a few people this week and I've said, I've simply said the, the statement. I'm like, why are you? And I've never said it before. I said, why are you punishing yourself? Mm -hmm. And I swear to God, guys, that has massively shifted. People are like, I am. I'm like, if you don't like the people you're hanging around with, don't hang around with them anymore. If you don't like the job you're doing anymore, go find a new one. Quit reading the story that you've already written and write a new one. I mean, isn't that isn't that where we're isn't that what we're talking about? I mean, I think David, um, I think there was a question. Um, Jen says, I see play as something devoid of anxiety and stress. It's effortless, it's joy. I'm at my best when I'm immersed in play. Yes, you're immersed when you're just you know being why? You. why? Yeah, that's right. You lose you lose time, and, and like Scott, we're, you know, we're on the same page here. You're fully present. You're not attached to the future. You're not attached to the past. You're, yeah. you're completely present in the moment. So this is why my whole thing comes down to this: the adventure of purpose, the book I wrote. I'm gonna give it to you in one word, guys. It's very simple. Play. Just go play. Yeah. See what happens. See what insights you come up so with. Let me and, and you say anxiety, and, and, and so much of our anxiety comes from, stems from two things, I find. Um, it, it, it stems from our attachment to the unnecessary and our avoidance of the necessary. So how can we trace that anxiety back to one of those things? Ask yourself, what am I avoiding? What, what am I attaching myself to? And what do we find when we play too? We're not attaching, our avoid, or attaching ourselves to anything. We're not avoiding anything. We're fully with it, man. We're with it. We're with it. fully present. We're, we're being, we're, we're, we're doing what we're supposed to be doing in life. And I know David, I just, I'm just seeing your comments. Uh, David is, is, he's the play king, man. I think you, you, oh, you he's he's got awesome. me started in this whole, David's killer, man. Uh, if you were to view life as game, what would be your big game right now? How could you play full out? I love viewing life through that way, man. 
perfect. And that 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 has the power to change so much. Mm -hmm. So I want to I want to add to what Travis said because you know it, it, it's always nice to like like visualize it and okay this is what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go play and then what does that mean? So here's something that I do with my students and I I love doing this with my students and explaining the science behind what's happening. So Chris, you'd get a kick out of this in my class because what I'll do is while I'm explaining, I teach business. So business can be either really drop like dry and boring or exciting depending on the person teaching it and the class dynamic. So I will be telling a story and then I'll say something completely stupid or I'll swear or I'll, I'll do something to shake them out of the rhythm. Shame. And the, the, re the reason I'm doing that and understand this, think of, think of, if you're anytime you're in stress, no, in a stress mode, and I know that um, Travis understands this, you're in beta. And so you can be in low, mid level or high beta. When you're in low level beta, let's say that that's where your brain waves are receiving a boring message. So it's like right now I'm talking to you and you're hearing it, you're writing it down. So you're not having fun, but it's not super stressful. Then I call on you and I say, hey, give me the answer. That's mid level beta. And then when I say we have a test right now, now that's high level beta. So what, what uh, Travis was talking about when he's saying, let's play, we can go into alpha waves. That's where it's full creative presence, where we're just having a good time. So what I am always doing is I'm shaking kids out of the idea that learning is stressful. And I'm like, hey, let's build this and see what this looks like. What would a business look like if we did this? And then they start creating. Guess what happens? Everyone looks like they're asleep. They're coming up going, hey, what do I do about this? What do I do about this? And I'm like, I don't give a shit. Do whatever you want. And they're like, are you really the teacher? I'm like, let's just have some fun. I'm like, I'm like, you know what? Everyone always does it this way. Let's try it this way, even though it makes no sense. And let's see what happens. Imagine and they're just that. playing. They're playing. Cool. They're playing. Yes. They're playing. Yes. And you know what happens? They're confused as hell because, and this is what I tell them. I say, I'm helping you get from, I'm telling the science from get from beta to alpha. Mm -hmm. You can do this in your own class environment. Create play. Like if, if you need to draw a picture or take notes a different way, try to get out of that high level beta. Like at least be conscious of it because here's what happens at 18 high level beta is okay at 30 what happens i got the belly i'm not feeling as good that slack lining aka tightrope but that working is it i'm not playing basketball hitting threes at 49 if i'm in high level beta 24 7. so we can get out of that so read travis's book learn about the play counter the books about science get involved understand how to play in life be transparent it's not rocket science. We just make yeah. it that way. No, life well, is here, here, here's a, here's a, I'm, I'm going to add to what you're saying here. Um, I think what it comes down to in, in, in my style of coaching and, and what I've seen helps transform the people that even if you're a client of mine or not, you know, even if you just follow my stuff or you're a friend of mine even, is, is awesome. that the transformation, <laughs> I hope people, I hope my friends think that. Um, <laughs> transformation does not happen through information. It happens through animation. And that is such a beautiful fucking call to action from the universe to come out and get out of our heads and to go live life. Go, because the best classrooms in the world, man, they're not, they don't have four walls. It comes through the things that you can learn through the four walls and then go out there and experience. It happens through an experiential level. Right. That's where the wisdom and that's where the, 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 the that's where we really grow is through that. And so that's mm -hmm. that's what a beautiful call to action, Scott, to just go create, do, play, have fun, enjoy this, like, be a part of it. Like it's incredible. And that's 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 not just for students. That's for if you're 85 years old trying to find your purpose for the rest of your life. Do that. Animation, not information, because we can sit and, and analyze the information all day. And, and what do we sit? We sit in a state of perpetual preparation. We just sit there mm -hmm. and we think and we think and we figure out all. The, yeah, and we, and, we, and we think of all these reasons why it's not going to work mm -hmm. and why I'm I not going to. I want to say something. The old stories. I want to say something that no college professor is ever going to say. You ready? Yes. If you had a choice of partnering with Travis or taking my class. I would partner with Travis and I'm going to tell oh, you why a thousand percent and I'm going to tell you why now if, if you were to have me coach or Travis, I'll pick me because I deserve the money more than Travis because he's too pretty. That <laughs> yeah. that makes sense. He's going to get it in one way or another anyway. But so, yeah. if, if you were to take the college class or get a coach, I would take the coach and let me tell you why he already nailed it. The system of education wow. as set up right now is to create slaves to a corporate world period. Yeah. 
we have a system and we're seeing it unfold and we're seeing these realities come out. People are questioning more. People are waking up. People don't understand what's going on. If you are going to spend a few thousand bucks to have Travis coach you or go get a four year degree and you're going for business, I would choose the coach. I mean, oh, thousand percent. Now, now, granted, I just got fired right now because some dean of our school is going to toss me from this. But what I'm literally telling my students is I'm, I'm literally, without them knowing it, I'm coaching them. And I'm nice. sprinkling in the information they need to walk away with. And here's the ultimate irony. And, and I know you guys can predict this. They remember my shit more than any other class because right. I'm literally, nice, they're having so fun. They're, it's, almost like they're, it's almost like they're having fun. I'm like, hey. Here's some uh, four P's of marketing. So uh, this is a good day, right? Hey, here's a little bit of swab analysis. I'm just going to drop you on your plate while you guys are building shit. And they're just like, oh, thank you. And so later, like, yeah, remember that day that we were hanging out building that and that SWAT thing came up? I'm like, tell me what SWAT is, Frank's Week, not true. Which is internal and external? And they know it right away. Yep. And I'll see you later. Because, right. because how did you learn when you were That's a kid? Because right. it's fun. Why the fuck does that stop? Oh, my God. God. Right? It's not that complicated. It's it's Why don't we... Why are we funding Scott with to, to fund our education system right now? Go oh, you now. Can you remember PayPal and Scott at NRG Austin. <laughs> yeah. Well, you remember now. all the God. remember all the elaborate buildings and all the things that we came up with with logos and erector sets and all that shit. Yeah. You know, what I mean, it was like One that day. was like just fucking. I mean, that that's what it is that we were as kids. That's what we wanted to do. We built and we built things. Curiosity, curiosity, yeah. adventure. I mean, when you think about, I sit there and talk about Adventure, all the time with my coaching clients and thinking about the fact that we're all little kids inside big bodies because when our, when you think about our emotional intelligence and tell me if I'm wrong, guys, our emotional intelligence is created in a situation where we are influenced by people who did not know any better, who were struggling right. to figure out what it is that they were doing to teach us to be better people. But when you go back to the fact that you just play and you have adventure and you have excitement and you have curiosity about what's unfolding in front of you, that's living. That's not existing. That's my thought about it. And there was a lot of structure in the back, you know, back in the day, you know what I mean? It had, it, it, that's the way it was. That's the way you were grown. I mean, that's the way it was as we are going through what it is that we're going through. And really, again, coming back to the present time, I'm um, see guys, I'm trying to be present. Okay. So in coming back to the present time, you know, we are going to be hit with some things. I mean, we have not felt the, 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 the full effect of what it is that's going on today by any means. And in, in fact, we're in survival mode right now. And so while we're sitting there and being survival mode, we're just kind of like hanging on. There's going to be a point in time as to where we're going to have adversity come towards us in a big, big way. Now, how are you going to handle that? You know, are you going to handle that into where you kind of like fall in line with everything that you're being told to do? Or are you going to be your individual authentic self? And how is it that you're going to utilize that authentic self and emphasize that authentic self so that it's not lost in these times of adversity? That really is where it is that we're going to work. The, the tires are going to hit the road big time. They really are. And, and you know, and that that is something that is going to be it's going to be paramount for us as host of the different shows that we have in order to be able to help people stay their authentic self, help them stay within the, like with the awakening. You, the answers are within, <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, that is it raw and unscripted. It's raw. You know, the living the dream with Travis, you can have dreams through your adversity. You can, you know what oh, I mean? You can, oh, you can sorry. have epic, you can have epic conversations. You can have adventure within your life. You can do these things even while you're growing through your adversity. And, and notice I were, use the word growing through because I'm not saying going through. I'm saying growing through because you are going to grow. It's just mm -hmm. a matter of are you going to be growing in the way that you, that you are going to want to be or are you going to grow backwards? Because that's really our, our choices, really. Mm -hmm. Massive. Well, there's, I mean, there's two, the way I see it, there's, there's two ways that we can uh, uh, experience challenges and adversity in our life. We can either let them define us or we can choose to define them and grow from them. Uh, I often say that your karma is your dharma. Mm -hmm. If you're working on purpose or you're working on fulfillment in life, maybe uh, maybe that's hidden somewhere in your old story. And maybe the challenges that you've been through are actually 
the, the way that you need to move forward and, and, and say, hey, maybe I can help others through this. Um, mm -hmm. So I kind of like what Shane, Shane's doing right now, right? Your karma is your dharma, baby. Yeah. Some of the shit that you've been through in life, you're helping others through right now. Yeah, Powerful. you have to you have to take your trash and turn it into your treasure. I mean, realis realistically, I mean, that's the fact of it. When I, I loved what you said before, it was about re the story. Like if you're writing a story based on victimhood, then that victimhood is going to perpetuate itself into an outcome. And if you sit there and say, like I was the two guys I was talking to last night, that it's going to be an upcoming interview. I mean, so profound, the fact that they were able to actualize and sit there and say, okay, this is a fucked up situation. And this is the way I choose to see this for me as a building block for strength. Yeah, where most so. people sit there and say, that is an excuse for me to be lazy or stupid or not do anything That's or do anything else. You have to write your story right. in such a way that perpetuates the fact that you're going to be unstoppable. You're going to get rid of your excuses. You're going to have that sense of wonderment, that sense of adventure to get yourself out of that and start getting in back into play. We're still little kids inside wanting to play, but we put on these masks like, oh, I have to be this teacher. I have to be this parent. I have to be this thing. I have to be this thing. I have to be this thing. It's like, just be you. And all of that is going to meld together. Yeah. Right. Uh, and the, and the, and the strength too, our strength is within our play. Oh, yeah. That's, that's where we're, we're the strongest, you know? And, and it's like, that's where we're like a rocket that's on the rocket pad, just waiting to just blast off. You know, it, that's, that's really like, like Travis will sit there and he will, he will tell you straight up, you know, it's like it, how are you going to reframe this? And, and this isn't happening to you. It's, it's happening for you. And, and, you know, and it took a very long time for me to realize that sometimes when I, when I'm helping people understand something that they might go, be going through some adversity, I heard uh, in one of my teachings was that we would sit there and we would be pushing, like, pretend like there's a monster that's outside the front door and the monster's trying to get into your home. Well, what are you going to do? You're going to take everything that you've got and you're going to be leaning on that door to make sure that that monster doesn't come in. Instead, what I would suggest is opening up that door, but make sure that you open up the back door too, so that you can escort that thing right on through. You know what I mean? So it's, it doesn't have to stay. You can but, let it, let it in and let it out just the same. So what, what, happens had, if, 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 what, ha what happens if you're so scared of that monster that you just, you keep the door shut and you never let it in, right? Oh, what does it do? Great question. It, do it, it, it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, doesn't get less scary. No. It doesn't go away. It just is and you're still more you're fear still using everything. And more stagnation. Right. right. And you're Absolutely. keeping yourself it's, funded. It's the, you're keeping yourself from like sometimes what I'll sit there and I'll say, invite the damn thing in and tell it to sit down. Because yeah, now you're right. now you're in the power, right? In because control. when you're sitting there and you are holding against that door, you're giving away your power. You're, you're, you're totally giving away your power. So you're holding it to keep it outside. And then instead invite the thing and say, sit right down there. I'm going outside and, you know, get an ice cream. I'm do going outside and ride my Shane, damn I, bike. Do you think that monster gets I saw high? this great. Does it get you high? Yeah, <laughs> I was just wondering if he's trying to get him high or something. <laughs> I saw this great meme on Reddit. I saw this great meme on Reddit yesterday. And, and uh, it, was, it was beautiful. It was, um, somebody, cr somebody created this meme. And they're going, uh, it, it showed a cabinet with dishes kind of getting ready to fall out if you opened it, right? So you right, get what I'm saying? Right. You, get, you get the illustration, right? These dishes, yeah. if I, yeah. and the, ther the therapist says, they just open up. And then what they're saying is, if I open up, this is what's going to happen. I'm going to open up and all the dishes are going to fall out, right? This is what therapy is like for me. This is what opening up is like. This is why I can't open up to people. Yeah. And somebody left a comment under that. And I go, and I read this comment and I go, yes. And they said, yeah, you know what? It will open up. And yeah, you're going to have some broken dishes. And yeah, you're going to have to sweep up. But afterwards, what happens? Now you have a working cabinet all of a sudden. Now you have a cabinet that could take new dishes. And you have right? the That's best dishes useful. on the on the table, right? You right? can. You got new. You're not dealing with grandma's china anymore, baby. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Own, you, uh, now you can go get new identity, dishes. Right? You got a whole new identity. Somewhere in there, right? I don't yep. got to have you, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm saying, man. Yeah, it's it's hard to open up. It's 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 hard to go through that. It's hard to let the monster in. It's hard to slay the dragon. No but what it. happens <clears throat> on the other end of letting the monster in, of opening the cabin, what happens on the other end of slaying the dragon is the treasure. Joseph Campbell said it best. The cave that you fear to enter holds the treasure that you seek. 
No doubt. The cave mm. that you fear to enter holds the treasure that you seek. He didn't say right. the cave that you fear to enter. Hey, guys, run away from that cave because it's kind of scary. Get in it. He said enter it. Right. Because in the other end of that cave, you're going to find your treasure. On the, going through that adventure through the cave, you're, what you're going to discover is that my fear was mostly, mostly, not always factually, but mostly this unfounded concept that I made bigger than what it really was. Open yes. up. Open the cabinet. Yeah. Try slaying the dragon. I think your sword's a little bigger than you think it is, <laughs> right? Yeah, that's what that's what she Ooh. said. All right, I'm gonna, <laughs> let me hey, answer. Hey, let me I answer. Somebody hey, hey, don't say talk that. about your sword. We had right. a question that I want to answer real quick. Yeah, is this Raquel, the same one? Raquel says, Raquel says, asking for the greater good. I see a lot of increased stress and anxiety right now. How can people point themselves to a place of positivity, etc.? Raquel, thank you for asking that question. So I'm going to leave it to you guys to answer that question, and then I will offer my input. But yes, that is a massive question. And uh, what do you guys think about that? She asked another question too. We can integrate three things with once here because I'm all about I'm all about integrating. So right here, she was looking for increased positivity. She also asked earlier about play and yes. somebody who's not used to playing. So let me answer a few of those things with one. We were talking about the idea of when we're stuck in victimhood. When you're stuck in victimhood and somebody says things like play or be positive, you just want to punch them in the face. Yeah. Right. It's awkward. Right. Right. So watch this. I'm, I'm going to I'm going to do a metaphor and I'm actually going to take Travis's example too. my mind thinks fast. I come up with a lot of stuff at once. So instead of a cave, we're going to call it a tunnel. There's so a we're diagnosis walking. for that, right? Oh, no, go yeah, ahead. it's oh. called it's it's called crazy. <laughs> so crazy. Yeah, I, I resonate with that. There you go. So so where are those guys? So that tunnel, that cave that we assume is a cave is actually a tunnel. So here's what happens at the beginning of that tunnel. OK, a.k.a. cave is victimhood. We're looking in and we're going scary. Don't want to do it. So we can sit our whole life outside that cave. So I can't go in. Once we go in, this is what we do. We step into what's called perpetrator mode. We look back and we go, look at those victims, those wusses who won't come in the cave. Loser, loser. And we sit in the cave and we think we're a tough guy because we're a little bit in the darkness. And then we take a little step further. We go into what's called savior mode. And in savior mode, we can see the light at the end of the tunnel and we can go, we know there's something out there. And so we look back and we're like, come on, guys, it's OK. You can follow me. Look at me. I'm strong. You can trust me. Yep. And so then we start luring everyone into the cave saying, it's OK. Come on, come with me. And we spend all our time there. But we still haven't understood the game. The game is after the tunnel. We're in this game of life right now. We can sit in victimhood, step into perpetrator. Then we're going to get into savior mode. I will tell you the four people on this show right now teeter in and out of savior mode into other places because we're coaches. We're always empaths. We're receiving and serving and we're doing so much for others. Here's what happens. You step out of that tunnel that you thought was a cave. There's an entire world on the other side. That's where you play. That's where you play. And, and that is the, is that? and that, and that's the way you play. Now, here's the thing that tunnel is dynamic. It's not, it's, it, it's dynamic. So sometimes you run out and you go out and you start playing. You're like, oh, but it was comfortable. It was the womb. It was comfort. And you run back in and you want to get back in that tunnel. You want to go Sir. back in and you'll jump into savior mode or, oh my God, guess what happened to me? I'm going to run back out of the, Hey guys, I'm a victim again. And we can just flow in and out of that. You're familiar to it. You're familiar to it. Yeah, it's it's but, certainty. Yeah, it's right. But it answers all these questions. You want to get out of that victim mentality. You want to get into positivity and you want to play. You've got to follow the process. You've got to get out of the victimhood. You've got to get into a place where you can sit and perpetrate or get out of that quickly. We don't need to look back and criticize others. Go in and serve others in that savior mode, in that service. There's something positive in it. Very quickly past that. Now that you know the process, now that you see the process, you can get to play mode real quick. And in play mode is where creation happens. That's where this world is being built. You are the gold. That crack that shows you the gold, that's the infinite ability to freaking create anything in existence. That cannot be done in victim mode. That cannot be done in perpetrator mode. That cannot be done in savior mode. That's outside the tunnel. Mm. Ladies and Boom. gentlemen, I'm going to have a sip of this beer because I deserve Boom. it. Boom. We have, a, we, have a, we have a great question from Marlene. How would you guide someone in the autism spectrum to see their way out of their fear? That, that, that Marlene is a serious, serious, heavy question. But I mean, from my perspective, and I, and I, I dovetail on what Scott just said, you have to play. 
You have to, you have to allow yourself to be free. You have to allow yourself to be who you are. If you're quote unquote autistic, you have this, this fucking label, ADHD, whatever it is, it might be. If you're allowed to play and you're allowed to like just delve into who it is that you are, that creativity and that output is going to come and that's going to shine. That's what you want to grow. That's what you want to harness. You want to develop develop that. It's like everybody sits there. Oh, everybody should go to school. Everybody should go have a marriage. Everybody should have kids. Everybody should have a job. Everybody should do investments. It's like, no, maybe I just want to go travel and have a great fucking time. Maybe I just want to go see people and see their smiles and go do shit. Mm. That's what you need to harness. You don't need to go into this prescriptive shit that we sit there and say, oh, yeah, go to school, get a good job, get good grades, go get a college education, get a fucking bunch of college debt, go get a family, go raise them, go put shit and money for their college debt, and then wind up old and go, wow, I didn't live. I existed. I existed based on a prescriptive situation that I was told when I was six year fucking years old. I mean, come on. I mean, you have to let, you have to let people play. I mean, at heart, I was telling everybody this week, I'm like, you're a little kid. I'm a little kid. I'm a little kid trying to figure out how to be a fucking adult and I don't want to be an adult. So why not be a kid when I'm a kid? That's when the fun happens. That's when I interact with people. That's when I connect with people. That's when it's congruent. That's when it's fun. When Scott and I talk, when you guys and I, all of us talk, it's like, when you're just being you, that's the free fall into your new identity that, that doesn't have a, 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 a fucking quote around it. I mean, that's my thought about it. How would you guys answer that question? I've worked with autistic adults. So, uh, I, I, I get it. And you know, when here's what I know, I mean, I worked with autistic adults that were from Willowbrook, which was a, a, a horrible institution and they were really stunted. I mean, they were, they were, they were a lot of different things happening, not, not to trigger anything, but the reality is, is that they are massively unique in their own right. And what was very, very cool was the fact of how it is that they would express that. You know, some were were mute, some, some didn't even talk. They didn't know how to, but they knew how to sign something to let you know what it is that they were thinking at that given time. Um, you know, there, there was times as to where you talk about play. That's what they went to, they would play. That's when they actually had everything mm -hmm. that was going on for them in the biggest way. That's when you really saw how they were expressive, how it is that they felt and what it is that they were thinking. And even when they were mad, they were still playing. You know what I mean? Like like wrestling or when or maybe they maybe they might throw this actually happened. One of them threw a speaking spell at me and, and hit me in the head and I got a concussion. You know what I mean? But it was like that was, you know, and the next thing you know, they're like, I didn't do that. And I'm like, yeah, you did. You saw, you know, it's like, you now I'm going to the <laughs> But, you know, I mean, but they were just like, that's what it is that they are. Now there's different, uh, you know, there's different points of the spectrum and everything in that sense. But, you know, be you, be you, you know, it's like, that's just it. You know what I mean? Who cares what everybody else thinks? Here's the thing. If somebody's sitting there and they're criticizing you, they're not criticizing you. They're actually judging them. They're yeah, judging them. They're super, judging themselves. Fucking huge. Can you bring that question? Well, Travis, do you have an answer to that? Because after your answer, I'd like to see the question again because I want to process that a little more. I, I, I'm interested okay. in trying to answer that. Sure. What do you yeah, get, Travis? The question about uh, people with autism. Autism, yeah. So how would you guys? Yeah. So uh, I want to be very right. careful. I, 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 I don't specialize. Um, with people who have autism, but um, I think what the theme here is is I have worked with people who have autism before and and um, been been in for for them. So I want to be very careful in saying that. Um, mm -hmm. What I find is is the best best expression um, comes through what we're talking about here: play, play, be play, yeah. have fun, enjoy, and that's where so much self discovery I find comes comes from as well. Um, I don't think I've, I've, I've worked, well, I haven't worked with anybody to the degree that Shane has. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's kind of, in my experience, it's been, that's been it. Yeah, Find time to blow be... bubbles, like you said, right? Lego, would... sidewalk chalk, bubbles. Blow bubbles as long as it's not a yeah. dog or a clown. The, the, there's an interesting thing here. I'm, I'm still bad, I'm still bad. <laughs> we're talking about childhood and and and, 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 and you think about what, where we were in, in childhood we had dreams we had goals we had aspirations we we knew who we were on at a very authentic level no filters right? too and, and when I'm, no filters and what i'm saying as, as an adult it's not that we grow worse it's that we grow different and but what we do 
have to remember is that we need to have the inclusion of both the child and the adult mm. in our life because they can work yeah. together so well. As a, as a child, we have dreams, but we have like no means to make that a reality. We have these the ideas, but we have no way to make it possible. But here's the beautiful thing about being an adult is that we can do it. We can create it. We can start the business. We can start the idea. We can, we can really be ourselves as an adult even more than we were as a kid. So we have to adopt both mentalities at, at the exclusion of neither, mm. right? So there's that childhood mentality and then there's that, that, that adult mentality that, that, can, that can help facilitate that and grow that. I always say it's important in life to do this. You have to let the inner artist do its work before you let the inner critic do its job. Yes. Mm. Now, notice I, I mm. notice I didn't say you have to let the inner artist do its job before our and never let the critic do its work, right? Right. Have, but what we do is, as adults, is we have this weird thing where we have the critic do it. I want to do that. Oh, everybody knows that's not possible. I want to do that. Oh, what are people going to think of me? Oh, I want to say that thing. Oh, I'm so stupid, 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 right? Let it come out. And then as the inner critic, what it can do is, is help cr create that in, in a very physical way. We can build a plan, we can, we can take the action in a powerful way, right? But what we have to do is remember that's the order that the film, we're gonna find fulfillment and bliss, is let the inner artist do its job before you let the inner critic come in and play the role. Or as Hemingway said very bluntly, uh, and we can adopt this philosophy in life and or writing, as I did in my writing, as I did in my writing, write drunk, edit sober. <laughs> Say that again? <laughs> right drunk, edit sober. I love it. I like that. Get right, the creative right, self out. Right drunk, edit sober. Hell yes. Ladies and gentlemen, boys right and drunk, girls, we have, we have really, I mean, we've been going for an hour and 21 minutes. I mean, massive value, massive truth, massive authenticity, massive vulnerability. You guys are like chiming in on the, on the comments. Thank you guys so much. What would you three individuals say to the people that are watching either live or on the replay? What, what advice, what, really like core centric map instructions would you give to people who are struggling right now and thinking like, what the fuck am I? What would you say to them? And let's round it out and please give your social media contacts and where people can get a hold of you. I know that we have a newly published, beautiful author who has a beautiful book that I want to promote. So, uh, and we have an amazing podcast network that we want to promote and we have an amazing go love now movement that we want to promote. So ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I have Scott, Shane, and Travis. Please take us out with your final comments and where people can get a hold of you. I, I want to honor Travis Scott. by yeah, I want to honor Travis by saying nothing more. I, I want to echo what he just said. I mean, there's how did you how did you phrase that again? Uh, the inner critic, the the say it again. Let uh, you, you must let the inner artist come out and do its job before you let the inner critic do its work. Yeah, yeah. See, so so I, I would like to step away from everything and let people hear that one more time because the school system and the education system has formulated your identity based on that you have to achieve all these things. So the fear overtakes the love. So the minute that you let the creator start, you're a winner. So I, I'm going to let let Travis just say that for me right there. Cause I think that's beautiful and echo that. And you if guys you gotta be... listen to this guy. It's really smart. <laughs> <laughs> HB in the house. <laughs> I, I, so I'm coming up to LA soon. So we're going to have to go out to the oh, beach. Yeah. Crazy. Like I'm going to, I'm going to get hurt on a surfboard. I'm going to get eaten by a seal as it's getting eaten by a shark. I can feel it. coming. <laughs> um, and I can imagine you're, you're, you're manifesting <laughs> your future. <laughs> I mean, listen, it's all about the story. We're speakers. If I can get eaten by a seal, get regurgitated while a shark's eating a seal and surf the wave in, I'm go. covered for life, guys. Life good, man. You're good living. I mean, honestly, that's good living right there. We'll talk about that forever. You know the guy who get eaten by the seal, regurgitated while eaten by the shark? That's, yeah, that's my, my buddy Scott. <laughs> yeah. What, yeah. A kick, yeah. what a kick ass story. I just want that. I Thank want you. that bad. <laughs> So, so if you need to find me, you can go to, uh, we're going to be doing a lot of changes to the site, but we work with kids um, over the past few years, teaching them about love, compassion, and kindness, primarily self-love because schools are actually, believe it or not, the biggest resistors of creating students to be more self-loving. We're actually going to start working more in corporations and training the trainers. So we're going to teach teachers to bring that into the schools more than the kids. And then uh, we'll ultimately get back to the kids. So 
Uh, self love, compassion, and kindness. GoLoveNow.com. We're rebuilding the website. We've got our own song that uh, is pretty cool. It's the Go Love Now theme song. Go to YouTube. You can listen to the Go Love Now song. We've got a ton of videos up there. And Facebook.com forward slash Go Love Now. Same thing on LinkedIn. Same thing on Twitter. Same thing on Instagram. It's Go Love Now Movement. That's and it. it's awesome. awesome and it's work. truly, truly awesome. So go check it out and subscribe to that. Please do. Yes. Yeah. No, it's massive. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll go. Uh, so, you know, what the, the quote that, that Travis had said is how the network was, was built. You know, I definitely let my artists go first before I did my credit, you know, because I had to, otherwise I would never I'd be having maybe one show, you know, but I, I, I ventured into building a network and to building a network to help others be more than the challenges that they face. And I joked with Scott, you know, about how there must be a diagnosis that's involved uh, in regards to the mind racing and everything in that sense. A lot of our audience deals with a lot of different challenges and struggles that are out there and suffering that are out there, whether it be medically or mentally. And some is because of their own self-created crap, no doubt about that. But there is also things that are real, right? There are definitely things that are real. There are definitely, you know, uh, illnesses that are real. There are, you know, we get hit by the blind side, whatever that is. And what happens is, is that that audience member will basically climb back in the box versus come out of the box, yeah. right? And so what we're doing and what we do as, as host of, of the different shows that we have is that we are, we're telling them it's okay to get the hell out of the box, even though that you don't feel like it is right now. Because what happens is, is that they have a lot of things that go on that they, they just are in the merely survival mode. They have doctor appointments, they have therapy sessions, they have things that they got to do in order to satisfy disability. They don't even go there with me. Then, then you have to satisfy this particular thing. You have to satisfy that particular thing. You can have disability, but you can't have that much into your bank account. You, you can have disability, but you can't, you got to do this in order to have the insurance and everything. It's a full-time job. To be on on disability it's a full-time job in, in regards to dealing with pain and suffering and struggling and illness and everything like that so it's really easy to see somebody getting back in the box versus coming out of it and so what we do as host on the speaking the heart podcast network is that we are giving people the permission we are we are empowering people to be more than the challenges that they face because they are just they are the goal that's behind the clay that's what it is that they are. We just need to be able to, to show them that. And believe me, they're not dumb. They aren't incapable. They will start believing in it. They get their heart pumping. That's why it's called speaking to the heart because the heart starts pumping because I personally did not feel my heartbeat for over two years. I was just merely existing in life. I wasn't living it. And this is where, where their heart starts pumping then all of a sudden they start seeing possibility. Then all of a sudden they start feeling purpose again and they start making a difference in that special and unique way that they can. And, you know, as far as finding me, you know, speaking to the heart.org is our website. Uh, you know, I'm not hard to find at all. So, you know, and with these guys, I really am really blessed to have each and every one of these guys, you know, put in their knowledge and put in their, their, their faith in what it is that I do. Uh, to be able to come to you as a, as a, as an audience. And that really is something that I'm blessed with. So I appreciate it. No, massive shame. thank you. Thank you, man. I mean, you provide the network for us to share our thoughts and to be authentic and congruent. That's massive. Cause so many people want to sit there and say, well, I want you to be this, but I don't want you to be that. It's like, when I think about when I go on shows, I'm like, can I cuss? Can I swear? I'm like, well, no. And I'm like, okay, so what are you trying to say? So thank you, Shane, for, for allowing that and permitting that and to advocate for that because, you know, when people sit there and talk about my, my swearing and everything, like, oh my God, it's, but you know, it's about heart and it's about passion. It's about shifting. And intention. Yeah. In, intention is definitely the part of it. And that's, so you, you know, that really does make a difference. So yeah. Yes. So thank you, Travis, my brother from a little yeah. mother. Uh <laughs> I, I was going to keep it short and I still will, but Pamela <laughs> left a comment there. Pamela, because, you know, it's all, it's all about, uh, uh, you know, less information, I think, and, and just take an insight. After every coaching call, I always, um, yes, yeah, keep that one up if you can. Yep, sure. Um, 
after every every after every coaching call, I always say this: What is your biggest insight from today's call? Yep. Mm -hmm. How are you going to apply that to your life? Right? Because we can read all the personal development books in the world, and uh, you can have a bookshelf full of them. They collect dust. We don't do anything about them. And what what do you say there? So I'm going to ask yourself: What is the single insight that you took from today's conversation? With the theme, which I think to me is the most important element of transformation in life is to what we've all expressed step into the artist first let the artist do its work and then bring the critic in i want to just leave you with a story i love stories and i'll make it quick there was um a, a little girl uh and this is an old fable and she used to sneak into her her brother's her little brother baby brother's bedroom every night uh, if you can keep pamela's comment up uh real quick because sure. uh, she said we see God, we see God in the mirror every day. Yep. Uh, she would sneak into her little baby brother's bedroom every night, and her parents noticed this, and her parents started going, "What is she doing in there every night?" Right? And she's just going in there for a little bit. So then one night, they followed her into the room, but not really. They kind of put their ear to the door, and they can hear the sister say to the baby brother, "Baby brother, what does God feel like?" I'm starting to forget. Well. Oh. So, <laughs> that's impactful. You can remember. Step into it. Live powerfully into it. Life is much too important not to have a good time doing it. Okay. Enjoy. All right. Enjoy the journey and discovering the answer to that question. And where do people get in contact with you and purchase your book? Okay. Uh, my social media is uh, Jesus. If you can find me at, at, uh, at uh, Instagram, Twitter, at Trav Barton, just Travis Barton, uh, Travis Barton Life. Let me just try something. Let me just try something. Let me just let me just play for a second. Uh, let's see. Share screen. Share screen. Uh, where is it? Oops. Careful Listen, what you're please. sharing now. Yeah, I know. <laughs> swearing's okay, but you know, <laughs> swearing's okay. But I can't. I'm trying to figure out how to share Travis's. Like, I had it all set up. Damn it. One eight hundred buy oh, weed from Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where can they get your goddamn book? Because it's brilliant. So here, so here's the thing. You, you can you can get the book. Right, if, I'm if, type if, it if in. You want to get the it. book, and, and yeah, and you want to read it. Um, if you take anything out of this conversation, and just take this, and this is all written in the book, and this is I, I have you consider the crux of the whole book is this. It's this. It's it's try to rethink the way you live. Try to rethink your stories. And plus, step into your bliss. One step at a time. Take that little segment that I just said right there, that little, that little tiny thing right there. And if you want to get the book, you can get the book. And if you don't want to get the book, you can just listen to that every day. And then I'll give you everything you need to know. All right? So if you want the book, it's called The Adventure of Purpose. Um, you find it on Amazon. It's out there. It's uh, It feels pretty crazy to be a published author. I always wanted to do that since I was a kid. Dude, I'm so, and I'm so proud of you, dude. I'm yeah. so proud of you. It's, there's, there's no reason. I, mean, I know yeah, yeah. the journey you have been on. I know from personal experience, from bartender to coach to author, I'm so fucking proud of you. I talk I mean, about my bartending in the book, man. So <laughs> I you do. Talk about me uh, in the book? I haven't got it yet because Amazon's fucking yeah, sucking. But do you talk about me? Amazon sucks, dude. I, oh yeah, it does. Your last Don't avoid week. the question. <laughs> it's, been, it's been a four and a half year journey since the first draft of that book to now. So I'm pretty no, sure. I, I know. Do, yeah. And so, and, and um, I might say I might say, can I share from our personal conversation what you have working on next? Or am I allowed to? Yeah. Yeah. I, so, so you have another yeah. book that's coming out, which is near and dear to my heart. Because oh, yeah. I have a three and a half year old son. So uh, mm. I'm excited to see this. I already have your book on order and I'm waiting for the motherfucker. So what else are you working on, Mr. Travis? I haven't announced it ever. I think I don't know if I have. Or do you not, want to do it now? Really, but uh, I, I don't. Yeah, sure. It's it's a uh, yeah. Why not? It's 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 a children's book. So I've. Um, yes. I. Um, I wrote a children's book and it's coming out at the end of this year. It's the art's pretty much done. Uh, we're uh, this one. I'm going to actually self publish it. So it should be coming out sooner uh, this year. Um, and this is a perfect example. I'm going to make it quick of me just letting the artist come out and play. I was I had a beautiful day one day and I said, I've always wanted to write a kid's book. 
if my old self would have said all the reasons why I couldn't do it and I never would have got started. This particular day, I said, I want to see what I can come up with. And I ended up creating this thing. And I read it to my girlfriend right after I wrote it. And she cried. And then I texted a, an illustrator that I knew. And I said, uh, hey, um, would you like to illustrate a children's book? And just, what the hell? I was just thinking about doing this last night. That the fact that you're hitting up is total universe. He's back. I was going to say. <laughs> Hang on. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, hit no, the volume. Okay. Can you guys hear me? Did I cut out again? <laughs> there you go. A little bit. My, my, can you hear me? Uh, yeah. My girlfriend right. called me. Sorry, I'm on my phone. Uh, so, yeah, the book's coming out at the end of the year. So it's, it, it'll be out shortly. Um, so crazy, Very crazy cool. world then. Very cool. Wow. Whew. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Wow. I mean... Any final, final thoughts about this conversation? I mean, I think, I mean, I'm going to have to go back and watch it and listen to it myself because I mean, just to be in the presence of you guys is such an honor and such a privilege and such a gift. I mean, seriously, on the journey I've been on to come in contact with you guys, Shane, thank you so much for putting me in contact with these guys. I mean, I knew obviously Travis before, but putting me in contact with Scott and yourself and just growing the fact that we are really seriously like no bullshit. We're trying to help people with our stories and with our experiences and with our knowledge to help you guys like grow beyond the stories that you're telling yourself. I mean, that is massive. So I just want to thank you guys so much. And, um, I just want to thank you guys all for being here Friday night live. Uh, we want you guys to get on with your Memorial weekend. We love you guys. We thank you for being here and sharing your comments and sharing your stories and everything else. Um, any last parting words, guys? Love you. That's Rock it. on. Rock on. You were all on. Yeah. All right. So I'm fucking overwhelmed. I have had a situation over the last couple of days where I've coached and talked to a lot of people that I didn't know. I have interviewed people who have tremendous stories and it just further exacerbates the fact that we are stronger than we think we are. We are more flexible and adaptable than we think we are. We are more open to change than we think we are. Stop putting those limits on yourself. Ladies and gentlemen, stop with the excuses. Stop with the bullshit. Stop with the fakeness. Stop with everything that's that's causing you stress in your life. You know, I sit there and talk to people over and over again. I'm like, so I hate my job. I'm like, why do you go to it every day? Uh, it pays bills. I'm like, isn't there something you could do that you fucking love that you could actually pay your bills? Uh, I guess so, but that's scary. Well, life is scary. I had, I was talking to some people yesterday. They're like, I just, I'm it's, there's so much uncertainty. I'm like, can you predict the next five minutes? And they're like, no, and I'm like, that's uncertainty. Everything is about uncertainty. And when you free fall and you love the fact that you're in play, you're in being a child, you're in a creative mode, you're in a really just an open situation to what can be versus what is that is life that is living versus existing. And I just want to thank you all. I want to thank my guests. Thank everybody. I mean, you guys are so powerful. Um, I just want to thank you all for being here and I wish you guys a great weekend. I hope that you take the information that we shared today and you apply it in your life. Don't just sit there and listen to it and go, Oh, that was really cool, but apply it in your life. Put it to paper, put it to fact, make some decisions about what it is that you're going through and decide that you're going to make some hard decisions and go through that because trust us, all four of us, we've been through that shit and it's beautiful on the other side. You have to go through hell to get to heaven. I mean, that's the fact. So we thank you guys for being here Friday night live. I love you guys. And we just hope that you have a great weekend and just uh, share the shit out of this if it impacted you and we love you. All right. Peace. and